I never knew Chris all that well. He was a work friend at best, but I knew where he lived, and that was all the information I needed. I went over to his place and knocked. No response at first. I didn't really know what I was expecting, in all honesty. But I stayed put in my pursuit for answers, continuously pounding on his door. I mean, wasn't it kind of peculiar that he conveniently quit on the night that the break-in took place? I must have stood outside his door for about twenty minutes. Logic would dictate that he simply wasn't home, and I was beginning to believe that. Until I heard a noise on the other side. It sounded like somebody accidentally knocking over a pair of shoes. This motherfucker was silently staring at me through the peephole. Chris, open the damn door. I said in a borderline threatening tone. Still no explicit response. He wasn't doing a great job of concealing the fact that he clearly knew something about what had happened. And then he slipped a piece of paper under the door in messy, scribbled writing. This is what it read. Can't tell anything. He'll know. Okay, I thought to myself. That doesn't sound good. I tried knocking for a few more minutes before his neighbors started poking their heads out. I decided to leave before somebody called the cops on me, but I was not planning on dropping this. I ran the facts through my head as I walked home. He'll know. I didn't want to admit it, but those words greatly concerned me. Who the hell was he? I stood on these thoughts as I made my way up to my apartment. But when I got there, I realized that I may have fucked up big time. My luck was busted and my door was half open. Call me a pussy, but I dialed 911 immediately. The cops came over in a reasonable amount of time and began the investigation. All in all, the only thing that was taken was 50 bucks cash that I kept in the drawer. That's what they put on the official report, after all. But that wasn't all to the story. There was something else that was missing. The device. In retrospect, the fact that I took it in the first place was a dumbass move on my part. No shit, it was going to have some kind of tracking system in it. I didn't even know what the hell it was. This posed a conundrum for me, of course. It was presumably the mystery man that had broken in. He knows where I live. He also tried murdering somebody who looked just like me. Safe to say, I was probably in danger. The cops said that they would station a vehicle outside my apartment complex in order to keep an eye on me for the night. I wasn't really sure how effective that was going to be, but it couldn't hurt, I suppose. But I still didn't sleep. That night, there was a knock on my door at around 2am. I nearly shit my pants. But then I heard, Police! Open up! Coming from the hall. I looked through the people, and it indeed was two cops that had been assigned to wait outside my building. One of them chuckled when I opened the door. How the hell did you do it? He said to me. How'd I do what? I asked in confusion. He simply scoffed and abruptly cuffed me. Although tired as hell, I still relentlessly questioned them about what the fuck they actually thought I did. It was only until I waited for half an hour in an interrogation room when a detective came in and gave me the answer. Apparently, I'd entered the building that I worked in, knocked the new night guard unconscious, and broke into one of the upper floor rooms. They also showed me proof. Security footage of exactly what they'd described happening. A person in a stereotypical burglar outfit waltzed in just as the new guard was locking the door for the night. They got into a fight. The mystery man won, but not before the guard managed to rip off his ski mask. The split second that displayed his face, yielding all the evidence they could ever need. It was me. Again. The footage then tracked him all the way up to the sixth floor, where he had entered a room. Guess which one. He was also carrying a bag with him the whole time, and it really wasn't a mystery regarding what it was either. The last recorded footage caught him running out of the fire exit. I couldn't even begin to attempt to answer the detective's questions. I know I didn't do it. Well, you know what I mean. 
I just kept trying to analyze what kind of situation this put me in. If the mystery man that I'd first seen was also me, then that means there had been at least two copies of me out there. And they were trying to kill each other. Then the situation with Chris made more sense. Maybe one of my copies had threatened him. The answer has to be in that device. Hello? The detective barked at me. You listening to me, Mr. Chase? No, I wasn't. He sighed. Look, we're just trying to figure things out. What was the plan here? I reciprocated a sigh. I don't fucking know. That entire conversation understandably produced zero conclusions. The detective stepped out and left me alone with my thoughts once again. But no matter how I framed the situation, it was always inexplicable. Beyond my comprehension. I sat in shock, silence for around 15 more minutes before the rabbit hole was dug deeper. I started hearing commotion outside of the hallway. And then gunshots. The detective suddenly rushed back into the room, looking confused as hell once he saw me. How the fuck? It's all he managed to get out. What's going on? I asked him. He just shook his head before coming over and pulling me up. Almost I was still in cuffs. Got to get you out of here. He started directing me towards a back exit while some kind of hell was going on in the background. At this point, gunshots were going off left and right. We were just about to open the door when I saw a bullet go through his skull. I made it out just before him, so I didn't suffer the same fate. But I saw who had done it. It was my copy, staring blankly at me and standing at the other end of the hall. He fired off a few more shots at me, but they were stopped by the door. Fueled by a perplexed adrenaline, I simply started running. I wasn't really sure where I was going, so I ducked into a nearby forested area. Once there, I hid myself in some bushes. I stayed there until sunrise, and luckily, my copy never found me. I heard police sirens all night. There was bound to be a lot of explaining to do if they ever caught me. However, I'm sure they'll just be as confused as I am once they view the security tapes inside the police station. Once I convinced myself that the coast was clear, I got up and tried figuring out where I was. It was an excruciating process trying not to be seen by anybody, given that I still had handcuffs on, but I eventually managed to find my way. I went to somebody who I knew could help me out in this situation. My friend Jack. Now, Jack was a drug dealer, and before you judge me for being friends with a drug dealer, let me preface it by saying that he's only sold weed and cocaine, and he's never killed anybody before. Pretty sure of that. It was about a three-hour walk from the city to his farmhouse, but I eventually made it, finally getting the damn cuffs off in the process. He asked me questions, of course. Questions I could not answer. Right after shoveling some food down my throat and smoking a joint to calm me down, I went on the internet and looked for any news coverage about the incident. I can't estimate how many cops were killed, but it seemed like there were a lot, so this should have been a big story. But there was nothing. At first, I found a few detailing some vague incident near the location of the police station, but after a few refreshes, they disappeared. Somebody was trying to hide this. I can't speculate what was really going on here, but maybe they know something I don't. It's probably better for me that my face isn't plastered across every TV screen in the local diner, but this also begs even more questions. I'll try to explain the situation to Jack later. Maybe he'll believe me. Maybe he'll think I'm a fucking loon. But as for right now, I don't see a ton of options. My copy is probably searching for me right now. The events that have transpired over the past week have taught me that I really don't know much about the world. But I do know one thing. I couldn't stay at Jack's anymore. The few days I've been here have pretty much consisted of me lounging around. I'll admit, I'm scared shitless to go back into the city. 
All I know is that my copy hasn't been tracking me. I'm not entirely sure how he found me at the police station, but what matters is that he can't seem to find me now. But a new problem has presented itself. I think somebody else is looking for me. Last night I was having a cigarette on the back porch when I noticed some kind of disruption in the crop field. It was dark, and I wasn't really paying good initial attention, so I didn't catch it until it was uncomfortably close. Something was moving around in there, making its way towards the house. I was on extreme edge at this point, so I immediately ran back in. I told Jack what I'd seen, and he subsequently stormed out with his shotgun. I waited, tensed there for what felt like 15 minutes. And then I was jarred by a booming slunk, and then another one. Jack rushed back in, eyes frantic, and locked the door behind him. What the fuck? He said, sounding petrified. Don't tell me they're after you. What did you see? Did it look like me? He shook his head. What? No. Like, some dudes in body armor or some shit, I don't know. Look, if they're after you, then you best speak up. That was the issue. I didn't know who the hell he was talking about. The situation suddenly escalated when I saw flashing red and blue lights coming from outside. The cops were here as well, presumably drawn by the gunshots. Oh fucking Christ! All my shit's here, they better not snoop around! And then he turned to me. Look, if something's going on with you, then you should probably leave. Leave? I asked him in disbelief. There's cops out front and weird armored fucking people in the back, where am I supposed to go? He shrugged. I don't know. We could hear heavy footsteps making their way up to his front door. Suppose you could take your chances and hide here. Can't stop you now. And then they started knocking. I made my way upstairs while Jack opened the door and talked to the cops. As I hid in one of the bedrooms, I eavesdropped on the conversation. It started out calm enough, but it escalated rather quickly, although the voices started raising at an exponential rate. It sounded like Jack was on the defensive about something. I could make out what he was saying, albeit barely. There's no one here! All of a sudden the footsteps began storming up the stairs. I didn't have time to ask what the fuck. They were looking for me and too many obscure reasons to probably count. I opened up the window and jumped out before they could find me. While I was out there, I considered attempting to steal a police car. But I suppose I wasn't ballsy enough for that. Instead, I simply started running. I knew that there was another town that was about a two-hour drive from where I was. But in terms of walking, well... Let's just say I had another trek ahead of me. After about an hour of walking along the empty road at night, a truck stopped for me. Now, under normal circumstances, there was no way in hell that I would have gone with this fucking guy. To put it bluntly, he looked like a serial rapist. But the situation at hand seemed to necessitate it. Plus, I started to feel like I was being followed. You going somewhere, bud? The driver asked with a black tooth grin. I smiled back. Yeah, you down to give me a lift? Unsurprisingly, he did not go where I was directing him. Instead, leading me down some sketchy trail, I started anticipating when my first move was going to be. I'd taken a pocket knife from Jack's house and was clutching it in my hand as he drove. I decided that time was right when he stopped us in front of a rusty shack. All right, he said, sounding comically foreboding. Time to get out. I could see him starting to reach into his pocket, but I was faster. One jab to the ribs and he was screaming. I followed up by elbowing him in the face and dumping his squirming body to the ground outside. But not before I took his wallet. As I started driving away, I could see about four more equally sketchy looking dudes coming out of the shack. I shuddered not really wanting to think about what they had in store for me. In any case, I had a bigger issue at hand. I drove to the town I was talking about earlier and used some cash I'd taken from the guy's wallet to rent a motel for a few nights. Whilst I was sitting in my dingy accommodation, I started trying to put the pieces together. My copy was trying to kill me. There are multiple versions of my copy. There were dudes in armor roaming around in Jack's crops. The cops were looking for me. 
and I really couldn't go back to my apartment. Nope. I had no fucking clue where I was going. Feeling frustrated, I decided to head out for a few drinks. The motherfucker had around 600 bucks in his wallet, so I was going to splurge on a few Heineken's. I'd also found a small revolver in his truck, so I took it with me. Safe to say, I wasn't feeling safe. I made my way over to the tavern and sat at the bar. I ordered two beers and some chicken wings, because why not? Just as I was getting relaxed, the bartender seemed to recognize me. Hey, you again? He said to me. Oh god, no, I thought to myself. Apparently my copy had been here earlier, presumably looking for me. How long ago? I asked him. Looking confused, he responded. About ten minutes ago. Don't remember? Ten minutes. Shit. Feeling a bit nauseous, I went to the washroom and weighed my options. I suppose that it made sense to stay, given the fact that the copy had already left. He wouldn't have any reason to come back, right? As it turns out, I was wrong. Out of nowhere, I started getting a headache, and then my vision went wonky. I mean, I could still see, but my sight was distorted. Best way I can put it. It quickly subsided, but the nuisance was replaced by a sound of commotion coming from the bar. It sounded like somebody was arguing about something. It sounded like I was arguing about something. It was my voice. It was him. The bathroom door suddenly kicked open and somebody walked in, eventually coming to a stop outside my stall door. I wasn't taking any chances. I pulled out the revolver and fired two rounds off right then and there. I was met with surprised labored groans as I climbed out up top. I landed right beside him. Right beside my copy. This was the first time that we'd stared each other down directly. Staring into my own hate-filled eyes was something of an abstract feeling. Sure as hell didn't feel right. The headache and vision problems began coming back. I could tell that it was affecting him as well. It also looked like he was wearing a bulletproof vest, so that explained why he was still standing. Fight or flight, I thought. An extremely quick deliberation yielded flight. I fired off another round at him, the bullet narrowly grazing his ear, before running the hell out of there, into the confused and horrified faces of the bar patrons. Behind me, he fired off a few shots of his own, but luckily, none of them connected. Zigzagging my way through the streets and alleys, I took a convoluted route back to the motel parking lot, where I got into my commandeered vehicle and floored it out of there. I only made it about a half an hour before this shitty fucking truck broke down. It then took two more hours of walking in order to reach civilization again. Another small town, and another dingy motel. That's where my current situation has placed me. Obviously, I don't see an end in sight here. I'm on constant high alert, adrenaline fueling my paranoia. I think it's paid off, honestly. I've seen the same black sedan drive past my window about four times now.